Hey there, everybody. Just wanted to do another quick video on a topic that I've seen come up from time to time when we're talking about playing with like dead ball error seasons and stuff. It doesn't really matter that much which game you play with. Um, the problem that you'll run into is how often you need to bunt to have the uh, sacrifice play be realistic. Um, and uh, the truth is, at least from my experience, you probably need to bunt a little bit more often than you think. So I'll show you something uh, just really quick. We'll jump straight into it. So this is part of the uh, Skeetersoft NP3 game. Um, I'm not sure if this is really going to be big enough for you or not. I'll sort of talk my way through this. I'm looking here at the game where we have the um, uh, player board or the uh, game boards. You can go to options and rules and then boards. You can look at the entire board system, um, results 11 through uh, 1 through 11, 12 through 45. The uh, advanced pitching chart, which is a lot easier to read here than the original advanced pitching chart because um, you don't have all the Q ratings show up all at once. Um, and uh, hit and run, different pitching symbols, and so on. And what we want to focus on here is the sacrifice play. So without getting deep into this, without doing any sort of analysis, without doing anything like that, what I can tell you is that a lot of the results on the sacrifice boards do not result in a sacrifice, right? So you have like player result 33 or 34, this is with a runner on first base, has the lead runner thrown out and the runner, the batter ends up making first on a fielder's choice. There are numerous results here that result in a double play. There are some that result in things like a patched ball, or passed ball, patched ball, a passed ball, or a, a runner being uh, caught off of first base um, by the catcher. There is a hit by pitch. There is a walk. A, a, a 13 ends up being a foul strike. An 11 ends up being a single. None of these are things that count as a sacrifice. And as you go through the different boards, you see that there are, are repeatedly different types of uh, results that will not give you a sacrifice. Either it will be some sort of double play that is like a net negative for the uh, offense, or it is some sort of uh, like you know, a walk or, you know, a single or something like that, that's not going to give you that sacrifice. And the reason why I bring this up is because a lot of us are kind of concerned about um, sacrifices in these games. You want to make sure as much as is humanly possible that you get sacrifices just about right. It's not just because, oh, you want to make sure that the bunts are like right on. Rather, it's because you need to make sure that those outs are there and that they're being counted the right way. Um, so the trick and the, the truth about these uh, simulation games that a lot of people mistake and a lot of people don't understand is that it's really all about the outs and making sure that you have the right outs. We'll get into this a little bit later when we start talking about how these games are constructed and common problems that come up. One of the things you have to pay attention to is the number of outs that uh, people uh, or that uh, teams are uh, 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 making. If um, you have a certain category of outs that are underestimated, for example, you have caught stealing, right? And you have a bunch of, uh, uh, you ha you're playing with a game that doesn't give you like the realistic caught stealing totals and you're missing the caught stealings that actually took place in real life. That could be a significant number of outs, especially if you're talking about like a dead ball area season for which we have no caught stealing statistics and we're kind of estimating them. You might not know this, but baseball reference, when they talk about catcher caught stealing in like 1911 or 1906 or whatever, um, those are all estimates. We don't actually know the number. Now, the reason why this is important, though, is because when you're making a simulation game, you have to make sure those caught stealings are there. Otherwise, the outs have to come from somewhere. And if those outs come from just guys hitting the ball and getting into outs, you'll either see too many runs because the guys will continue to hit at the same average or produce at the same on-base percentage but have more plate appearances. Um, or you will see, uh, you know, uh, batting averages um, on base percentage and so on decrease because those outs just came from somewhere else because of a different problem in the game engine, right? It's important that you get that right. There's a whole bunch of ways you can get that wrong, including uh, not having enough base runner advancement outs, not having enough caught stealing, and also not having enough sacrifice bunts. But of course, the sacrifices are interesting if you're old fashioned like me and you actually think batting average still does mean something. Um, the problem with uh, not having enough of bunts is that you will end up depressing your own batting average if you don't bunt often enough because remember that uh, sacrifice hit does not count as an at bad, right? And that's a key, especially if you're dealing with in, with a season where each team had maybe two bunts per game or somewhere around there. This is one of those things that uh, a lot of people kind of miss and they mistake. One of the problems that they forget about is that uh, instead of worrying about the actual number of successful sacrifices that take place, which is the thing that shows up in the stats and in the box score, you need to worry about the number of sacrifices that were attempted. 
And it kind of takes a feeling for you to know, should I bun this situation or not? And what do I do? In other words, just because you have guys who don't um, have a great on-base percentage or batting average coming up to bat doesn't mean you automatically bunt with them if there's someone on base, right? It does depend on the game situation and what's going on. You have to learn kind of by feel and by practice what re is realistic and what is not. Many, many years ago, I had a 1900 replay, uh, National League only, of course, because nobody cares about the 1900 American League for some reason, um, using a skater soft. And my replay was okay, but the batting average was depressed. Now, I do think that there were some problems with the pitching grades that caused that. But I also know that one of the problems was the fact that I didn't bunt enough um, throughout the course of the season. It's interesting because stolen bases, caught stealing and stuff like that was almost right on. I mean, it was amazing how on the other statistics were. But because of the sacrifice uh, issue, the sacrifice bunt issue, uh, we had some problems. So uh, the other thing I wanted to show you here really quick um, I'm going here to the screen view now is this a PDF that I received. Uh, this comes from um, a person on one of the forums who sent me a uh, pretty poor call quality photocopy scan of uh, the APA Sacrifice uh, booklet from 1952. Um, and I just wanted to show this to you so that you know that this isn't just a skater soft thing. If you're playing with APA, this now this isn't the most recent uh, Sacrifice booklet, but you know, it's kind of close. I know that this hasn't changed that much over the years, right? So again, with runner on first base, you see a bunch of outs that um, these uh, little crosses, I guess is what they are, um, denote a sacrifice. But you do have a hit by pitch. You do have a base on balls. You have a strikeout for if you roll a 13, which is um, kind of a shame, a number of double plays and so on. And as you move forward, like first and third or whatever, you're going to see again a lot of these kind of results. You know, foul strike, foul strike, you know, another strike here, runner's hold. Foul strike if you're all 27 with runners on first and third, and so on and so forth, right? So, um, again, what you have to keep in mind if you're playing this these kinds of games is that you may need to bunt more often than you thought. And it may be the case that you bunt with somebody and end up getting a base hit, but then you're looking at this and thinking, oh, man, but we haven't had our one or two bunts in the game so far. For that, I would say just relax and only bunt when the situation calls for it, but keep in mind the types of players that you have. The key to playing with bunting in the dead ball era is to remember that you have a lot of players who are probably not going to get a hit, so you might need to do something else to move your runners along. The really difficult seasons are those seasons before 1904, so before the spitball really became big, those uh, seasons in the 1890s and the very, very early 1900s in which there was there was a lot of offense, there were a lot of runs scored, and averages were higher, and yet there was also still a lot of bunting. That's harder to do. It's harder to get like the right feel and the right flow for that. Anyway, there you go. I thought it would be another interesting thing to talk about. This is one of these aspects of these games that you'll see pop up on message boards from time to time. But the truth is that not a lot of us really talk about it or think about it, especially in our modern era with um, a lot of the saber metrics and uh, with this uh, total um, anti-sacrifice uh, uh, point of view that's um, come across. I mean, nobody bunts at all today and nobody talks about this at all. And most people who are professionals at this or who are fancy saber metricans will say, why would you ever bunt just if you do your simulation, just have everybody swing away and we'll all be happy. That might be okay for a 2022 replay, but um, it's a lot more interesting when we play with older seasons when this was a strategy and we can uh, sort of make the replay in the season work out. Anyway, there you go. I'll talk with you tomorrow. See you then. Bye.